All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Nisei Monogatari, Monogatari episode, episode three. three. All right, mm. y'all, the last episode of oh, Nisei man. Monogatari was perfection. It was. What is there to say? What is there like, to say? It was yeah. absolutely wonderful. A gift, a yeah. gem. Yeah. Yes. I can barely uh, 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 hold myself back, you know. I, it, it's absolutely just something special. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, and, and now that we have touched base with almost everyone sends Hanakawa, we kind of mentioned Hanakawa uh -huh, in episode but, one. But not really, like, gave her focus, which, you know, that, that could just be something that they're just deciding to not do. Right, um, right. Uh, if anything, it seems like the general main plot seems to be focused on the sisters. On the sisters. Mm -hmm. And as to where their problem is going to be, we right. haven't really gone deep into that yet, other than what we did with the youngest sister who was feeling ignored. Sure. Feeling then, a little bit... Um, and then we got some good exposition from Sengoku about the whole situation. Uh -huh. But given how slowly they've been sort of trickling in the plot stuff... Right. Because of all the other plot stuff and uh, dialogue and whatnot that's wonderful... Yes. Are they going to continue that pattern? Or because they've touched base with all the other girls pretty much by now, are they going mm. to then focus back onto the plot, you know, hardcore? Yes. Um, not too hardcore, I hope. But uh -huh. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyways, yeah, what are they going to do with that? Who knows? But yeah. the dialogue has been amazing, and I absolutely love this. This this might end up being something that I like more than Kizu. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But, like, but like the dialogue is so good. Like, each one of these episodes are, so far has just been an absolute treasure. I, I, think so, it, I think what it is is that we are happy to be back in the classical yes. monogatari, mm -hmm. right. just dialogue intensity yep. mm -hmm. madness. Right. Uh, we did a little thing right before we started the recording and stuff like that, and we were basically saying, like, hey, which monogatari girl oh, are yeah. we? Mm -hmm. We would like to hear your thoughts in the comments. Yes. And we'll have the mods basically collect the general general consensus mm -hmm. as to which ones we are right um be not, sure to, not to overly compliment ourselves by saying that no, we no, no, are no. like any of these amazing girls no but. of course not but uh which one do we just bear the most mm -hmm. resemblance to and we'll let you know at the end of the discussion of this video uh what uh what we believe each other to be at the end of this video at the end of this video. All right. Get into this video. Yes, well, then, yes. I guess we better get into the episode, shouldn't we? Yeah. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, everyone. We're going to be starting the episode in five, four, three, two, one. Now. Snap, snap. Mm. <laughs> that was an A. That's some good BL organization. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. Oh. Indeed, possibly. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, she kill you both, yeah. Ah, the game of life. Nice, nice. Ah, we have Hanakawa. Mm -hmm. Ha! <laughs> 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 mm. They're debating the whole topic of best girl right here. Yep. And how they all fit in the harem. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> She's giving his hair a hand job. Oh yes. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Even sisters. Right. Mm. 
What if they ended up together? Hmm. Whoa. That's, that's cool. Crazy art. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay. No, that does not surprise me at all. <laughs> She's getting destroyed. <laughs> bracelet, bracelet. Wow, wow. Yes. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yep, yep. The true final boss is existence. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, he is such a ditz. It's great. Yep. Uh. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yes. Right, right. Okay. The visuals are slightly different, right? For yeah, the, I think uh, so. For the OP. It's the uh, same song, though. Right, but I don't think Senja Gahara was quite as front and center. No, she wasn't. Time. Oh. The idea, though, of Sengoku being the final boss. <laughs> hey, it could happen. Oh, it could happen. But just the idea of, like, that's how long probably it's going to take for Araragi in order to clue in, like, um, yeah. you realize she is crazy about you right uh -huh. it's like no no i'm con i'm i'm dealing with other things right now so my brain doesn't have enough processing power no it's enough ram yeah yeah sure <laughs> he can only multitask so much multitask yeah yes multitask yes oh boy <laughs> even though she was talking about like you know about kanbaru as being like the third lover in their crazy twist of course she wasn't being fully serious so no 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 i mean she's joking about the whole harem thing like right, by right just exactly putting into it and trying to maybe dissuade him as much as she can about senja gahara so that senja gahara can be hers <laughs> right <laughs> whoa whoa that was a lot of text karen b part three okay that's important oh sure uh-huh Right. Mm. Like about why you were naked and talking on the phone with somebody? Okay. Few more years so that you're an adult and then she can leave. Right, I yeah. think so. Because she would be. Who's that? Okay, is that Oshino? No, that's no, not Oshino. Like, yeah, it looks like someone different. Oh, 
and the red mm -hmm. ominous background. Kaiki. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> ah. Because he knows the sisters. Is this the uh, the uh -huh. boy that they, you know, the other boy that they both liked? Maybe. Although he's really old looking. Yeah. He also has that classic vampire kind or of look. Werewolf or werewolf. Of. Yeah. Yeah. I do have your house you. Oh. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Curious. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a line. In this track. Yeah. I love it. Oh. <laughs> But in some ways, he's not. Oh, that's cool. Now that we've seen Kiza, right. we would know mm -hmm. who that is. Him being a potential vampire hunter, though, is pretty cool. Whoa. Did you see that? He instinctively was just like, yeah, no, let's not yeah. do that. Uh huh. <laughs> Threat. Yeah. Well, okay. That's right. a that's a very plot potential yeah. world building thing. Hey! Oh, now look at that smile from our eyes. Yeah. Did you see that? So hey. <laughs> She's being a tease. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh that freaking wow. freaking wow. freaking reference wow wow <laughs> ah. <laughs> warning warning oh <gasps> mm. I don't have time for Hanakawa. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Insect. Oh, so close. She might not be wearing any. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, how are you doing it? Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's having so much fun with this. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Watch your head, yeah. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> she can read through his yeah, eyes. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and how often have you come to see me? Danger, danger zone, yeah. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> right, right. Of course, there is no such thing, yes. In case you forgot because you were playing with six exactly. women today. To whom you belong. <laughs> yeah, she's just walking yeah, around him. Yep. Yeah. She's stalking him. Ah. Oh. No, that's sweet. Okay, cool. Hmm. Your normal territory. <laughs> wow. Yes. Saw <laughs> 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 that coming. Saw that coming <laughs> a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> he just ignores it and keeps going. Oh. Oh, and now we cut back to the beginning. Okay. Oh. Huh. Curious, okay. I don't suppose, is he the guy that attacked her? Maybe. Yeah. To protect you, right. Yeah. <laughs> she certainly does like her handcuffs. <laughs> oh. They are familiar. Okay. Hmm. Whoa, that was fast. Okay. Oh, the donut place. Okay. Unless you love them. <laughs> ah.
and he caused it. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, that was cool. Oh, hence Nisei. Nisei, right, yeah. Huh. Wow. Okay. So she took something that was important. Or he took something that was important to her. Huh. He'll be easily conned, probably. Saw that coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> Her hand going towards his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help me. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> 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 Sanjigahara fascination. Yeah. <laughs> With a kiss, perhaps. Ha <laughs> 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 so sweet wow. <laughs> oh. oh it's kaiki it's kaiki blackmail blackmail the okay. con is still under effect Wow, okay. Um Oh, uh, 
crap. Uh, this is not good. Oh! Oh, Hanakawa! Okay. I mean, I suppose that could be a lion, it could be Kaiki, but it's but it probably is actually the Hanakawa. Right, right, it, it could be a lie. But, okay. So but they what? mentioned, remember how they mentioned that, uh, Kambar mentioned that there was this awkward situation that Kambar did not envy between Hanakawa and Senju Gahara. Right, so what's the deal exactly? Well, we know that there's the <laughs> there's the obvious well, stuff. Yes. That mm -hmm. Hanakawa is not happy that, you know, Senju Gahara and yes. Aragi are together. Right. But, uh... Okay. In some ways, that would make Kambaru and Hanakawa ideal allies. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's true. <gasps> okay. okay, so Kaiki, the new yeah. character, gives off the vibe of Guillotine Cutter and Oshino combined. So there's the idea of, you know, being the the oddity specialists, but uh, also mm -hmm. potentially a hunter of some kind. Yeah. Oh yeah, we watched these, yeah. Oh. Masuraga. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> mm. Oh. I have no idea what that is. I'm guessing some kind of cork. <laughs> okay. okay. So All right. We got we got more good dialogue, and yeah. we got a lot of good stuff with Sinju Gohara. Which was wonderful. Yes, Senju Gahara and Kambaru were yep. the primary uh, characters for this bit here, but we also were introduced to Kaiki. Right. Probably the most odd character introduction we've had mm -hmm. outside of Oshino, I would say, in Monogatari so far. Probably, yeah. Because his is one that doesn't fit the mold, I would say, of the way they introduced the vampire hunters in Kizu. Right. He is something that is more more aware of kind of everyone's situation it seems because he's an old mm -hmm. member of this town he used to be here right. he used to live here and the fact that he's described as a con man right means that we kind of have to start questioning everything that happens from this point out right he he is one that deals probably primarily in in leverage you know he has he sure. has he has probably the ability to see beyond the um I would say the kind of the how would I would describe this kind of like the masks, you know, but basically mm -hmm. just the 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 fronts that people put up as a con man. So he right, you know, he leveraged uh, a lot out of uh, Hitagi's family and yes. or, you know the the you know Sandra Gahara's mm -hmm. and. Right. Yeah, and, and and now he's back, and we don't know exactly right. what he's here for. There was some connection to Kanbaro, it seems like, but then not. And then there's the way that a lot of the characters have been acting a little bit strange, or at least distant. And there's the question of, like, okay, is that something that is connected back to him? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Because when I thought, like, okay, I we talked at the beginning of the episode, you know, and I mentioned, like, oh, are they going to go more into the plot stuff because they've touched base with all the characters, mm -hmm. right? This was not what I expected 
Like I expected Same. maybe that they'd get into the, the the stuff with, you know, with Karen and, you know, and maybe Sin Goku would give us more exposition about the nature of oddities and what oddities might be affecting them or, you know, or things like that. Um, but this is something else. Right. So we start off with Kambaru and we mm-hmm. go a little bit more in depth into understanding a little bit more of uh, Kambaru's kind of... <laughs> enjoyment that she takes out of the whole dynamic with Araragi. Yes. But specifically reminding Araragi a lot of uh, a lot of things he should be kind of maybe paying a little bit more attention to. Uh-huh. Um, and yet it seems to be kind of an echoing of sorts of where other characters have done similar things to that. So in mm-hmm. some ways it felt less like Kambaru talking and more just like just, you know, external forces knocking on Araragi's kind of glass right. little mind palace or whatever, mean like, hey, Araragi, are mm-hmm. you paying attention? Like, there's right. some there's if, some things going on out there that are yeah. pretty pretty important. If anything, it feels like Kanbaru would have a reason to comment on those kinds of things because she does not like Araragi, but she, in fact, likes Senja Kahara, so... Oh, she 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 likes the friendship, but yeah, she does not right, love exactly. So Araragi, she's she's not she doesn't have a crush on Araragi. Right, right. she's separate from the the harem in that sense. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense that she would be the one to commentate on it. Right. Apart from say Senjigahara, because she's the one that is currently in a relationship with Araragi. Um, right, and then maybe Hachikuji, just from the standpoint that Hachikuji has that kind of banter relationship with right. Araragi. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Some in some ways. A part of me wonders if. If the whole deal that Sinjikahara made about why didn't you go study with um, Hanakawa, Hanakawa is if that had something to do with their deal, where basic, but it doesn't like where where they mm. somehow made a deal that like hey he'll study with the both of us, but that doesn't seem like the kind of thing that Sinjikahara would do because she's yeah. you know uh, like like she said uh, uh, in this episode you know she didn't want uh, Aragi to think that she was a reasonable woman right. <laughs> um, uh, uh, you mean a tolerant woman? A tolerant, yes, yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. Yeah, tolerant. That's the right word. Right, um, right. So, so that doesn't seem like the kind of thing that she would do. But at the same time, it almost feels like maybe Hanakawa has some leverage over Senjigahara. But then, because because at least when 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 the phone call was made, it felt like it was a okay, you've got dirt on me or something, and you can kind of enforce behavior, right? You know. Kind of, yeah. Cedric Horror felt like to be in a place of vulnerability and weakness. Right. Um, which is unlike her. Very much unlike her. So, you know, it's like, okay, maybe this is the, the Kaiki person, but then she says it's Hanakawa. So, the fact that they ended the episode mm-hmm. there makes me think that it probably is Hanakawa. Yeah. In which case, this is a very interesting turn of events because mm-hmm. it felt like it would have fit perfectly for the Kaiki person, right? Um, yeah. So, I yeah. feel like this is all uh, foundational development for retroactive context to be applied to later in the same way they, okay. did, they did in Bakamonogatari. Sure. Uh-huh. So, if we go by that logic, the things that seem to stand out as needing the most retroactive context is basically everything Kaiki said right everything he said reeks of basically the oh there's context that's going to be added to this and we just don't know about it yet mm-hmm. and we're just gonna have to wait to see what that is because yeah. some of the things that he said uh alluded to the way by which he uh, kind of perceives certain things like he detects aura surrounding uh sure uh, kambaru's household and such mm-hmm. uh but it was lessened in some ways and maybe that right. has something to do with the last time he was here kambaru was dealing with her oddity situation and now yeah. that it's resolved and she's more kind of in balance with herself right. it's lessened and it's something that's less that something that he can manipulate so my right. guess or at least be privy to right now correct me if i'm wrong but the five con men that uh that H- hitagi originally went out to try and uh, get her problem with, solved. Was, was to get her problem solved, right? Right. And then this guy took advantage of that, and right. Um, he's someone that scares Sandra Gahara, not just as someone that scares Sandra Gahara for her sake and her family's sake, but specifically for Araragi's. Right. And here's something that I, I think that you might be like right on the money with is that this was the guy that um, uh, potentially tried to attack her. 
I, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, because because the 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 issue that she got was because was as a result of all of that, right? Um, not not the not so so that was before she tried to get it fixed. Gotcha. She wouldn't try uh -huh. to get it fixed from the person who attacked her. No, you got a good point. That, so yeah, that, so it's right. it's a separate thing. But but she's very concerned about Araragi. It could be that she, because she knows that Araragi is the impulsive, do what he can to help kind of person. Like maybe it'd be easy to manipulate or. I, that makes sense. That was more my next way I was going to go to, that Araragi is one that would be too easily swayed by his mm -hmm. words, or that he's going to be told things about Sanjukahara that, while maybe not fully true, it leads towards conversations Sanjukahara is not ready to have yet. Sure. Right. Because Sanjukahara then... is very much has boundaries put up in right and the fact that they went from talking about him to having hanakawa call yeah they did that whole lighting switch mm -hmm. which was good mm -hmm. but what was that all about like i guess we'll find out in the next episode right yes like, yeah like it's something where hanakawa was the last remaining character to give like to have time to be put into that early episode section of this whole little section of the story, Nisei mm -hmm. Monogatari. Um, and yeah. so it's like, oh, we're going to have Hanakawa be the last one to be uh, right. uh, kind of caught up with. It, yeah, it almost feels like it might be something where they're maybe developing Hanakawa further alongside other characters, kind of like what they did mm. with Shinobu in Bakke okay. and in Kizu. Gotcha. Um, but, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Because... Hanakawa doesn't seem like the type of person that one would have the confidence to do any kind of blackmail or whatever. Well, see, right? that's no, the thing. I mean, maybe. Hanakawa's whole thing is about people, um, you know. Assuming one thing about her and. Yes, exactly. That she's all nice and Perceiving perfect and everything. Perceiving she's yeah. this perfect girl right. when she's clearly not. Right, but even then. And the, she would never do anything, you know, bad or right. whatever. And yet, the metal cat is the way to basically you know release the stress that comes about that comes about from uh bottling that part of her up inside mm -hmm. right so i mean maybe it's just that over the time and the stuff that haven't happened in kizu and 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 bake and and everything you know it's just she's now um the inhibitions are starting to leave but well, i remember know. that bake bake was still after most... kizu yeah yes but it was yeah it was it was more recent than kizu mm -hmm. So right. the thing we still don't know fully is whether or not there was we no we do know that there were six weeks of time in between uh, Nisei's beginning and um, Bake's ending. Right. So there could be more stuff that happened in between there. Potentially, that, uh, we don't know about yet. But I feel like if there were, then that probably would have been. I mean, this may be a bit meta, but that probably would have been the thing that we watched after Kizu. I mean, maybe not. Depends, but, I would um, say. It, it really depends. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not sure. But this is a new side of Hanakawa, that, and we've kind of gotten a new side of Hanakawa every part, you know? Because um, Bake, that's the way she was, and we even got a new side of her there. And then we had Kizu, definitely a different side of her that we hadn't really seen before. Uh -huh. um, and now this, so maybe they'll go more into that maybe they won't in as a directive way i don't know okay um, okay so kaiki my my guess my guess as to how this whole plays out because i'm gonna pull in the whole karen b thing into uh -huh, this, yeah is that karen b and that whole bit was something that they did in the very beginning when they showed senju gahara chained up basically with araragi they didn't show that when we basically came media res full circle back to that beginning with her having him there meaning that that's something we're supposed to assume that we was inserted into that point uh you know where where, where it makes sense uh, hold, hold on just a sec so so remember the very beginning we uh -huh. have sandra gahara chained up or chaining up our rod yeah, yeah, right uh -huh. she mentions the the whole little tur tongue twist thing with the whole idea of the bee yes that wasn't mentioned here in this episode. Right. So, but this was probably at the same time as that exactly. part. And we got caught up to that part. Which, right. Which means that part in the beginning needs to be inserted specifically into a specific sure. part where we okay. didn't get it right. here. And okay. that can, if we combine them together, 
maybe add some context as to what um, Kaiki's meaning is for being here. Because now we know that Kaiki is the reason specifically why Senjigahara put him here. But Senjigahara seems to have a little bit more knowledge about potentially why Kaiki is here that she's not willing sure. to tell Aragi. And given from a meta perspective, this arc is called Karen B. Yeah. Then it's probably something where Kaiki is going to do some sort of conning and stuff with to Aragi's, Aragi's sisters. Family. Which yeah. then could kind of sort of explain maybe why Senjigahara wants him locked up so that, that way at least he's safe from it all but yeah i don't know right and then aragi got the text from the sister saying right. help me yeah it was all in red which we know a lot more now what red means red is really bad when it comes to basically just things well, happening in uh, monogatari like there's and, this there's this right. thing with colors that they have and kizu went a little bit more even into the whole idea of mm -hmm. that but when kaiki showed up the everything in the background yeah, everything was red was red right. like and this now guy's bad this guy's bad yeah. he's very bad right. and, and then, then so so but then when when aragi's younger sister texted him and was like help me yeah then hanakawa calls talks to senjigahara right and now senjigahara still said go home but aragi was planning on going home anyways so right what it is i th i believe what i what it is is that if we think about Hanakawa, she's the one that really, really, really loves, I would say, Araragi, and she's 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 first. You know, she was she was yeah. she was the first. And of all the characters' oddities, you know, she's the only one whose oddity had an issue basically thing surrounding their love for uh, Araragi. Araragi. Okay. Everyone else's right. is their own kind of their personal problems thing. and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So what okay. I could see it being is that Araragi's sister's problem is about to become Araragi's problem. Sure. Hanakawa probably wants to put herself into a position where she can help because she okay. is the kind of person who is the let me support you, sure. let me be there for you, and uh -huh. maybe she called in a little bit of a like a favor or maybe the negative version or, of a favor right of like it's my turn now yeah and that could be what it is maybe the agreement that senjigahara and hanakawa made was that it was more that senjigahara made sure to basically say hey don't hang around him too much you know hence why oh. like like some of the stuff has been happening you know studying with sure. the both of them hanakawa canceling studying and stuff like that yeah um, and the fact that Senjikahara was yeah. over there means that potentially she, you know, she was aware of some of the things that were going on, like, potentially. Um, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, hence caused that interaction to happen with Araragi. Um, right. And if if Senjigahara is protecting Araragi by, mm -hmm. you know, stop, you know, by, by sectioning him away from Kaiki here... But then Hanakawa, if we assume that was mm. Hanakawa, calls in and says, you "No, know, he needs to go." Yeah, he needs to go. Uh huh. And the only reason why Senjigahara basically says yes is because Hanakawa legitimately convinced Senjigahara. I think that actually lends a little bit more credence to it that it's actually a combination of Senjigahara oh, being okay. scared of Kaiki and wanting to make sure that Araragi stays with her and has sure. literally no way and, to leave because right. she's scared. And then maybe that's why she listened to Hanakawa is that wasn't part of the deal is because it's not that something bad is happening but that something bad could happen and, and that basically hanakawa convinced her to let araragi go right. because okay. she knows that hanakawa likes araragi and hanakawa is also very smart so if she believes yes araragi needs to go then she's like i don't like it but fine you know yeah um but she did seem different yeah the when senjigahara had up the phone and had her yeah mm -hmm. was, you know, right she was she was stutter, stuttering and stuff and yeah, yeah she was scared uh -huh. yep. and yep. and Sandra Gahara scared is something we never really see. No. Because she projects out, I would say, so much her own kind of pain and problems as jokes. Sundere style. As Sundere joke style uh -huh. stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, pulls back, essentially, if she feels right. like she's either going too far or that the person is just not cluing in, obviously, because they're stupid baka. Mm -hmm. That, like, yeah, no, yeah. that was a joke, obviously, you did right. it, you know? Mm-hmm. 
this is an example where there's there's no jokes. There's no right. you know, whatever, which means Sandra Gahara is very serious right now with mm-hmm. all this. And uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the whole bit, though, with Kambaru being, I would say, kind of the meta commentator on the mm-hmm. harem. If I remember correctly... Hachikuji did this kind of as well, right? Oh, with the whole, and the whole thing of like the I thought you would have ended up with Hanakawa and, and things like that. And didn't and who else did that? Was Sendra Gahara someone that did that too? No, I don't no, think no, so. No, 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 Sendra Gahara didn't do that. I think it was I mean, Hachikuji. She's met about herself being the Sundere and whatnot. Right. I think and it's how that, many girls think, did you hang out with? Yes, exactly. I think Kanbaru did it earlier in Bakamonogatari as yeah, well. Probably. But one of the things that I felt as a very odd inclusion here something that was uh, almost too on the nose with how obvious they were setting up Kambaru to have her line was when uh, they went up the whole idea of playing the game, the card game, and then Kambaru is saying like, oh, you get so competitive and stuff. And she's like, no, you see, you got to find happiness even in losing. See, because I just played this weird game called Twister with Sengoku and she was, you know, I yeah, yeah, I, exactly. I knocked her over. Yeah, and yeah, she, she, was, she totally lost, but she seemed like how she, she was still having seemed a happy. time. And Kambaru had this like, eyes rolling, uh-huh. neck yeah, tilting, yeah. like, oh my God, you idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet... It was so dramatically serious instead of it being a comedy thing. The way they zoomed in slowly oh, on the sure. eyes. And then it's like, it seems, what did it say? Like, it seems like you haven't, uh, like, you still have yet to face the final boss or right, something right. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is a funny line. But the fact that this show is all about dialogue, right? Uh-huh. Well, it's, it's actually all about characters, but they they use shown the, through dialogue shown yeah. through dialogue exactly uh-huh. which is, is it's it's amazingly done when they have these things that i would call just a small example of cognitive dissonance is we have the comedy line given in the dramatic okay. setting means that it's it's both or meaning, neither or, or, or no 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 or, just just simply that it's it's both on some okay. level and I don't know exactly what the okay. serious part is. Well, here's here's a way that it could the serious part could go. Okay. Down. In that Sengoku is not literally the final boss. Because no. there's not a literal final boss anyways. Well also this show is right. metaphors and all right. kinds exactly. of other stuff. But yeah. potentially for Araragi and his growth as a person, mm-hmm. the Sengoku's not Sengoku specifically, but the Sengoku's are the final boss. Basically coming to terms with the fact that he won't be able to make everybody happy, that there are right. certain things that people want from him that he won't really be able to give them, right? Yes. And, okay. and facing that and, and being honest with himself about it and, and you know, uh-huh. like looking around and seeing what's actually going on, right. um, that that could be his final boss. Right. I, I, like, the, I like the generalized uh, perspective on it. Mm-hmm. I think, though, that there is a little bit of specificity to it because uh, Kambaru is a commentator on the harem as a whole. And okay. I, I would say that the specificity, if I'm just going to take a guess here, is that Sengoku is one that has the um, has the infatuation with Araragi, mm-hmm. but doesn't have the... Um, doesn't have the relationship sure and it's something yeah. that mm-hmm. while obviously araragi cares about her and you know mm-hmm. gives her he gives her time like it's he's not right. ignoring her or anything yeah yeah from the standpoint of connection but there does seem to be this thing where you look at the banter between kambaru and araragi or hachikuji and, or araragi, hachikuji or and araragi or senju gahara or hanakawa or hanakawa is probably the most kind of awkward well right because sense. all the events of kizu and everything that happened after right but, but, but s- when it happens it's there right you know yes. they have a history and all of that stuff but when it comes to sengoku it's almost like there's this maybe one because we didn't like her arc as much in bakamonogashi sure. but i think it's actually something relatively serious in that she's the least likely on his list of people to take in that serious of a way other than maybe hachikuchi um, well maybe because it's the because oh, she's she's just my little sister basically right right like, she's my little sister's friend yeah because if you yeah. think about it technically technically she 
like Dararagi first. Yeah. If you don't count the sisters and whatever is there, you know, like... <laughs> it wasn't shown, it was told. No, it wasn't shown, but but still, you know. Um, yeah, but in, if, you, if you think about it in that way, then it doesn't matter to Araragi because from his perspective, he never picked up on that. Oh, sure. But well, he, and he never picked up on Hanakawa either. But well, he, no, but he, he definitely he, picked up in on... In Kizu, he did. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I think that's... Because otherwise... Because the, the way they've been the way they've been harping on Aragi just being clueless... Uh-huh. Like, you know, harem protagonist, you know, thick... Is by looking skull. at the Hanakawa situation, being like, right. "Why didn't you end up with her?" Exactly, and and the fact that he didn't, because because the thing is that there's no real reason for him not to, given the fact that it wasn't like, you know, immediately Senjigahara was just like, "Boom, let's let's start okay. dating or whatever." Um, if he had gone into high school and all that stuff, and they were, you know, sharing a class and everything like that, yeah, they they would have been going out if if he had actually realized what was um, going on because that's that's the only explanation i can think of especially well, with the whole chicken 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 part yeah you know? I, I think i think that's actually part of it is you think back to kizu and you think the uh the part at the end where basically um shinobu calls araragi out in his bs basically saying like the only reason why you helped me was because i was weak because i right. was basically begging for exactly. help and mm -hmm. you you basically you found some level of extra pleasure in that because I was this mm -hmm. weak, frail, fragile right, thing. Exactly. But now that I'm strong and confident, capable, you don't care about you me. don't care. And in some yep. ways, that's the that's the same kind of thing with Hanakawa. In that sure, Hanakawa was the one that you know was actually right. forward enough to be like, okay, fine, yeah, I'll you know I'll give mm -hmm. you my panties, I'll give, like right. all these things. Or and then we have maybe well because the because the thing is that with the scene with the the whole etchy etchy fan service scene right in kizu 3 um the when he chickened out he said i i can't see myself doing something like this with a friend like you yeah yeah you're you right you know it, it right. was it was very much something of like like your friend, right? Exactly. You're you're humoring me because I'm about to die, or right. you know, or whatever, right? Yeah. Um. So so he he didn't yeah he didn't which, which is just you know yeah. no wonder she's pissed right um well no wonder like everyone else is like still yeah exactly like, like, yo the hell man yeah yeah um yeah yeah okay okay okay. Yeah, then maybe that's part of the the whole thing of you know why you know Senju Gahara is kind of just you know pathetic and stuff is she's just adding in like sub subconsciously maybe not even subconsciously but maybe like it, it's just just seeing this person that she kind of knows at least relatively well and like oh yeah I fell for you but you're like. Like on oh, some uh -huh. level, there's this 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 pathetic side of you that just annoys me a little yeah. bit. You, you said you said why Senju Gahara is pathetic. And I'm like, wait, whoa. No, no, I, I misspoke uh, then. Yeah, my yeah, bad. yeah, yeah. Uh huh. But yeah, her mm. being like, wow, this is this is kind of pathetic. That like, yeah, I felt I felt for someone as pathetic as you. Wow. Like, okay, right. come on. And yeah. there's just a lot of connective tissue that I really wonder like how directly referenced it all will be in the future. Mm -hmm. And then other parts where I'm like, well, maybe these just are things that inform the next thing thematically. Yeah, yeah. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I I love it. We're yep. we're mm -hmm. we're we're moving into uh, a more mysterious part of right. the the show overall. I am I am a little bit and sad up the world a little bit that this entire episode wasn't all just crazy dialogue interactions and stuff uh, but i'm sure what they'll do with kaiki will be wonderful and whatnot and, and i'm curious to see how they're going to resolve this because they're doing a lot of things that i would not have expected and this is very different from bakamonogatari in that yes. we have gone now three episodes with into, no oddity yeah into no, an arc we know of with no yeah right. no specific instance of an oddity yeah. Like, we are getting rumored about the audience. Right, like, maybe it's already little... been shown and we don't realize it, but... Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if Kaiki is an oddity? Sure. 
And sure. he kind of, he's either the herald of the oddity itself or he, there's there's something about him that gives off that vibe that would mean there's an oddity aspect to him. I don't know. But yeah, who knows, y'all? Good stuff. Yeah, I guess we'll have to find out in the fourth episode. But if you want to see that next episode's reaction right now, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. Mm-hmm. You can get an early access there. And any level of support gets you access to our Discord where you can chat with us about this show in a non-spoilery, of course. So you can get involved in the community discussion going on there with all kinds of stuff ahead of time. Or uh, we can just talk about, you know, just shows in general or whatever. And if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time.